For many of us, when we just started out on our cowboy action shooting journey, we were bombarded with all kinds of advice. Some of that advice, while well-meaning and accurate from a certain point of view, it may not be the best advice for us in the long run. And sometimes we won't realize it until we have a problem. Hi, I'm Branch Water Jack, and we're having a discussion at the loading table this week on The Firing Line. I remember some of the first advice I ever received. It was right here at the loading table. Sure, I had practiced firing my guns before, which, believe it or not, included loading bullets into the gun. But inevitably, it happened. A very helpful cowboy informed me that I was loading my pistols wrong. While from a rules perspective, what I was doing wasn't wrong, I was the new guy. And this well-meaning veteran of the game wanted to show me the correct way to load my Colt revolvers. The preferred method, according to my new friend, was a long ago discovered method of loading the Colt single action revolver easily ensuring that an empty chamber was under the hammer. And it goes a little something like this. You load your first round. You skip the next chamber, and then you load the next four. You pull the hammer back to full cock, then you let the hammer down on the empty chamber that is now under the hammer. The same works out for our Rugers as well. You load your first round. You then skip the next chamber. And you load the next four. You then close the gate and turn the cylinder until it locks, leaving you with a hammer down on an empty chamber. While the load one, skip one, load four method of loading a single action revolver is effective, and helps ensure that a live round is not under the hammer, it doesn't take into consideration all the variables that can go wrong when loading a revolver. And for me, the biggest variable that this method of loading does not take into account is handling the occasional high primer. While we may do our best to prevent high primers with our reloading practices, inevitably one is going to sneak into our ammo box. The worst thing that can happen to us is when one is loaded into our revolver that we do not discover until it prevents us from rotating the cylinder on the clock. So, what are we to do? My preferred method for loading a single action revolver is actually pretty easy. I simply load five rounds. I then give the cylinder a spin. If it spins freely, I know there isn't an issue with my gun or my ammo. However, when it doesn't spin freely, I need to find out why. Nine times out of ten, I can see a scratch on the primer where it's making contact with the frame. I know that that bullet is my culprit, and I'll set it aside. I'll pull another round off my body and replace it. I'll then go through the motion of spinning the cylinder again to make sure that there's no problems. Then it's as simple as re-indexing the pistol to ensure that the empty chamber is under the hammer before I holster and I head to the stage. There are several things that can go wrong with our equipment when we take our turn on the stage. What are some of the things that you do to help ensure that they are mitigated as much as possible? And what are some of the nuggets of well-intended advice that you've ignored over the years? Leave us a comment about it down below and we'll see you next time on The Firing Line.